Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today we are making a tiny little launch. Um, this is nothing, this is not the main uh, launch of this program, uh, this episode. This is not even the main speech of this episode because I seem to be struggling with it. But yeah, um, this is uh, just a launch of basically everything you've seen before. We've got a remodified Moho probe on top. This one is not intended for Moho, but it does have everything on it that I want to scan actual Kerbal for. Kerb, Kerbin? Because Kerb, Kerbal's the sun. Kerbin for. So we can... Um, uh, find the anomalies basically and go go find all the stuff now I've got the uh, the multi-spectral band from Comsat and the scan sat on it I don't know why I keep calling it Comsat that's um, mainstream media getting too much into my face there uh, and it's also got a keythane scanner and th that's all it's got because that's all it needs so what we're going to do is we're just going to jump through the staging here nothing fancy just to burn through all the fuel and drop the tanks down uh, and up here we what we're going to do is let go of this a little bit early so these side fuel tanks are still on a suborbital so we don't have to deal with all that messy space debris um, obviously this moho probe is rather light or what what this repurposed mobile moho probe is rather light so it didn't quite need even like my lightest uh, launcher was too powerful to put this into orbit um, which means we've got we got stuff that we need to sort out at some point but it also means that I got up with plenty of like you know wiggle room and wiggle room is always good uh, so we'll muck around with the uh, maneuver nodes get myself into a nice circular orbit make sure that I am not clashing with the key thing uh, with the Kerbal scanner um, this is the Kerbal Surveyor, uh, that's an important distinction, obviously it's the next level up and a survey is better than a scan, or oh, so I'm going to assume in the naming process of this. Um, and yeah, wait on round, we look, test out the Kerbal alarm clock and I found out that whilst for big burns I'm sure it was amazing, but for these little sort of orbital trimming maneuvers uh, it's just it's too got too much of a dead zone it, it de-warps me at, at a ridiculous like two two and a bit minutes beforehand and when i've got a 17 second burn it says there to do uh, it's just too much i get bored and i skip past and then i have just the same issue as what i had before the kerbal um, alarm clock was installed which again speaks more about me than it does for the mod um uh, for the uh for the, the interplanetary stuff it, it will be amazing but up until that point it, it's not so hot um okay so as i say we're just uh, circularizing our burn before we get round to uh dropping this final stage and uh maybe next episode maybe the episode after we're going to start dealing with all this space debris uh, i don't want to just go into the tracking uh, center and go ah, get rid of it all because that's not very good is it um <clears throat> with the infernal robotics i've been working on a uh a deorbiting module i suppose you call it um there, there's going to be a yeah a little little ship that goes around clamps on deorbits drops it and then gets itself back up into orbit and then sticks on a space station uh speaking of stations and such this one is organizing itself to have all its scanning working and then we're going to go for the main launch of this uh this episode um the, the main launch being something to aid lenry which it, it, what this whole entire series is about is, is getting lenry off off and on his own and completely detached from uh the Kerbal space program because he's had enough of jeb and the Kerbal space program loves jeb so here, here it is this is the module that i am sending up uh, a bit of a beefier beefier um, launch stage this time and it turns out that was a very very good thing to do uh, we'll get into why later on but yeah this is my uh, my skipper tri stack I've called it uh, it is asparagus but it is three-way asparagus you know normally you have um, the opposites being dropped at the same time well this time it's things on three-way symmetry are being dropped at the same time and there is a dangerous amount of wobble in those side uh, fuel tanks there um, but yeah, we, we've uh, successfully dropped our, fur, our solid fuel boosters and not too long afterwards started accelerating again, uh, which is, is good. Uh, it means I've, I've hit the balance about right. Uh, obviously, we're trying to avoid breaking the 150 meters per second 
because back in the day I was told that was the speed you should try and avoid when you're taking something big up through the atmosphere and that that is literally the only reason I've not I've not run any numbers I don't know the system it's just on something that well in all honesty Scott Manley told me to do so we take we've got past our um, 10 kilometer uh, turn lean whatever whatever you want to call it it, it barely noticeable because I've um, noticed that I'm not really like I mean look at the, the the way the plumes coming off at almost a 45 degree angle that is very very low angle um, so obviously this ship is a lot um, a lot heavier than I, I originally anticipated and to be honest it, it should well be um, on that actual module not only do we have the science lab which is the main point we're going to put this science lab in orbit around the moon so uh, Lenry can get up and down and do some science and provide his own own technology base shall we say um, but not only that but he's also got two fuel tanks on there so he can uh, take stuff up from the keythane deposits on the moon and uh, uh, and store it basically uh, the the reef fuel drone that we already have up there you know it's nice but it's not exactly space station worthy is it whereas what we've got here I think should be of course the processing lab is only good for the uh, material science and the uh, goo container which is a main a, a big chunk of the science that is available to Lenry on the on the moon um, and of course we are going to have to fly up at least one other member of crew for Lenry to man the, uh, the, the, the lab um, and he can man it as well giving two people um, <clears throat> but my other um, concern issue thing that I'm thinking about is how to get surface samples that Lenry's going to take from the moon back to Kerbin without just having, I don't know, Jeb flying a shuttle mission because well, well, we know Jeb will, will try it um, and we don't want him to do that. Uh, I also don't really want to have a regular back and forth just to drop off stuff and keep Lenry out there. Um, though from the top of my head that really seems like the only way that we're going to be able to do it is to get a crew to meet up with Lenry, get him to pass his samples across and then send that crew back. Um, Obviously, um, Jeb will be the one doing that and trying to steal all the credit off Lenry, probably, because that's how Jeb works. What a terrible, terrible Kerbal he is. Anyway, so we're circularizing my orbit now, and um, for, like I think the first time ever, this has been a, a, a launch where I have had to um, literally thrust my way from ground to orbit. Um, <coughs> my altitude there is 99 kilometers and my apoapsis is 99 kilometers and you can go back and review the footage of whilst I was just like waffling on about how Lenry's going to survive um, and and see that yeah not not once did I stop well I'm, I'm kind of fluttering the, the the throttle here to make the numbers work nicely but there we go nice circular orbit and in a matter of seconds we can sort out a maneuver node and get set for going to the moon um, if I remember how it works you know look at the horizon boost up there do it right throw it down a little bit so we're not wasting lots of fuel and that would be an amazing approach if I can get it right now one thing that I had overlooked completely on this particular vessel was how I'm going to turn it in space it's got RCS storage and stuff like that but it's got no actual thrusters on it um, which as I say is more than a little bit of an oversight so I, I just nudged the uh, nudged the, the main engine a little excuse me nudged the main engine a little bit and um, begin this this oh so slow um, turn towards my my um, maneuver node now you're just gonna have to trust me that this took a long time because I'm going to skip to the end of it because it's gonna be really boring else and just as I get round to position the uh, Kerbal alarm clock is like hey you've got something to do now and I was like hey that's lucky because I've only just got round here now blank screen uh, you can just about see my my engine flaring there 
Um, so we're gonna push this as fast as possible, but unfortunately, for some reason, the maneuver node is just in the, you know, the the dead of Kerbal night, um, and there's not really much I can do about that. Um, going to the moon, it's it's not like you can pick anywhere on the orbit to do that, and unfortunately, this is where it just happened to have lined up. Um, I could have waited for another complete orbit, I suppose, and seen if that was any closer. But uh, as you can see, with um, with the Mun raising, uh, rising up over the surface of the Kerbal there, uh, I was in the exact spot. So we, we clear that manoeuvre node because it looked like it was quite a distance away from where I'm actually at. Um, and we watch, well, we try and watch for the sunset over, over Kerbal, but this takes so long that I'm like, well, I don't know whether I've got the right amount of thrust up yet or not. Um, and I, I can assume that this so far is not, but yeah, you know, this is running at double speed, so I, you know, I'm clicking back and forth a little bit quicker on this one than I would have been in reality. Um, I was just getting rather nervous that I would do something like that. Um, now, uh, aficionados of this game, oh look, and I completely missed the sunrise. Just to just to add uh, further insult to that, uh, aficionados of this game would have noticed that I've made a horrific mistake by doing that. Um, We'll talk about what the horrific mistake is later. Um, first, I was talking about this um, cleanup crew that I wanted to put up, um, and you're probably wondering, uh, so why, why are you not doing that uh, during this episode? And to be honest, the reason I'm not doing this during this episode is because I've got the wrong girder supports. Um, the 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 one the, the the massive massive girders that I've got at this point during my my. Um, tech tree uh, are, are not very good for trying to throw around um, say I don't know a, a 2.5 meter fuel tank that you're that you've managed to dump because you, you know, you've run out of fuel and had to dump it there and other things but we'll, we'll talk about that why you would need those particular parts later just for now know that the only reason that I've uh, done it the way that I've done it is because I need more science as is the way of Kerbal career uh, Kerbal space program career mode yes there we go spit it all out um right so i have accelerated time um if you look to the top left up to four times physics warp so we can start spinning this ship around at something close to a reasonable rate so i'm not just sat there going oh this is taking so long as it was i was still sat there thinking that but yeah there we go so we've we, we've got um got my ship lined up with with a, a nice little deorbiting well not the reorbiting de I never know how to describe this particular maneuver where you're 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 coming in too fast but you're you're decelerating down obviously there's no such thing as deceleration in space because you, you don't you don't hold on to something and slow down you accelerate in the other direction um, which yeah, it was something that was drilled into me uh, uh, oh god it was secondary school all those many many moons ago um, oh what was that that was that wasn't this end that was that end that was on the uh, the recording but okay so I've got myself facing in the right direction and I'm just like right well let's bring this down into a circularized orbit and uh, try and get my my orbit something approaching where the key pain hunter is um, now I, I have a look and I'm like wow that's a little bit off kilter perhaps we can uh, swing that round a little bit and get this maneuver node lined up uh, it should be just as simple as that hopefully uh, check check my positions check check the positions of all the other ships uh, and come out and get ready to make my burn uh, of course by getting ready to make my burn I mean try and swing this hulking great big vessel round oh, I obviously had a, a, a few yeah I remember now I, I had a, a few control issues at that point I was trying to move stuff and it, it even despite the inertia it still wasn't moving uh, even taking the inertia into account it still wasn't moving um, which is a, a little bit annoying because that means I now have to redo my my maneuver nodes and make sure everything is lined up properly uh, now I should have noticed at this point what my issue was um, but it's not we'll come up and we'll spot spot the moment again where twitchy realizes he, he's done things wrong um, so we, we give it a little thrust just a little bit of a kick and time accelerate up and just 
just wait and look at the ship and go, oh, why isn't it turning? So I can I can get my uh, my spin, my roll going well, um, and we'll take some time to watch Kerbal rise over the over the month, um, and watch my my ship gracefully pirouette in its orbit around. And there, we've spotted the manoeuvre node. We know we're going in the right direction, so we'll just carry on. And what's this? What's going on there? Why is that going in the wrong direction? I'm like, oh no. Oh no, this means many bad things. Um, so, that big mistake that I made was I put myself into orbit around the moon in the other direction from everything else. Which means that no matter how well aligned my orbit is, I'm still going to be slamming into it at roughly, I'm going to say a thousand meters per second when we come to come to dock, because both the ships are going at roughly 500 meters per second, and you know the wonders of addition. Um, so I, I, I'm looking around. I'm like, right, how how am I going to deal with this one? What what am I going to do? Um, two options. I either scrap the mission at this point and uh, start all over again which after uh, this is um, half hour maybe maybe three quarters of an hour of flying this ship around and, and turning it on the spot I'm like you know what I'm, I'm just straight up not going to do that let's see if we can actually salvage this mission if we can turn turn the orbit round um, that would be incredibly useful so first thing we need to do is definitely align our orbits uh, without aligned orbits all, all I'm going to be doing is just pushing myself around in the other direction going the wrong way still uh, which is not something I want to do so we'll, we'll spend some time here now we are a three minutes away from from completing this this burn and I'm like ah oh, stuff that I've got more far more important things to do than get this like perfectly aligned so I try and line up with the point whilst thrusting and, and bringing that delta v meter right down as low as it will go uh, this is the point where I was like oh wait this is a lot further around the orbit than I thought I was but that's okay we'll, we'll, we'll just go with this uh, sorry we're not as far around the orbit as I thought it was the maneuver is further around than I thought it was <clears throat> but that's fine this is so close to being like on the ecliptic that that it is fine I will just do with that now what we're going to do is just find my, my retrograde marker um, start thrusting and then just continue pointing that direction it doesn't matter what my nav, nav markers say now what I want to do is go in this direction um, and if I'm lucky I can put myself into a relatively close orbit with these two other vessels that are in orbit um, so there we go we've just passed the point where we would crash and burn without any uh, hope of rescue and now if we watch that periapsis number on the top almost left um, climb up we are safe and that's it that's brilliant um, just like that we're, we're ready to, to dump this and make it a permanent fixture around the moon uh, I do seem to be having a, a little bit of issue oh no I wanted to check that all my fuel was in the right place first before I, I did anything like that uh, extend my panels out so that we we're not just like dead in the water despite the fact that this actually has <coughs> excuse me no control systems upon it uh, there's not a probe bodies and there's nothing like that this is literally just for Lenry to pick up and use then um, whereas this one does have a control unit upon it because I knew that I'd want to I didn't want to leave this in orbit yeah as I say my my ships my grabber ships are not ready um, but the problem with that is the, the doing this uh, orbital realignment has meant that I am I don't have enough fuel to, to crash this so we'll just we'll take this as far out of orbit with the other ship as we can which is that far and I will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys uh, next time we will be hopefully launching the grabber but if not that we will be launch we will be hooking Lenry up with his um, satellite here and going down and doing some key thing and some, some some science if I ever learn to speak properly I may even commentate well Bye-bye!